survival, they have the right to acquire and preserve the fruits of their own labor. Uh, and, but his point is, and it's actually a good one, you know, he's following Hobbes here. He's like, well, the problem with that is that people are assholes. Uh, and um, if they would let each other alone, then we would still be living in a state of nature, everybody just doing what they did to get by each day. But it's a whole lot easier, you know, if I see like an apple tree a mile away, well, I can go over and pick an apple, but if you're 10 meters away with an apple in your hand, it's a lot easier if I pick up a rock and crack your head and take the apple. Mm -hmm. And his point was uh, that the problem is that people can't be counted on to behave. They will, they will take each other's property Moreover, he argued, if someone takes your property, you have the right uh, to you have the right to retribution in proportion to the degree of the magnitude of the, of the transgression. English translation, uh, if I take your apple, you have the right to take an apple back. Mm -hmm. You don't have the right to kill my firstborn, mm -hmm. but people being people, they're apt to escalate retaliatory behavior, thus creating what Locke called a state of war. So he said, in order to avoid a state of war, people reluctantly give up their freedom in exchange for security. They, they agree to obey the law, and, and that the sole function of government is to keep domestic tranquility and to ward off foreign evasion in order to protect our right to property. All right, so now here's the okay, so you, property thing. Uh -huh. All right, so uh, uh, Locke says, if you look in the Bible and in nature, there is no private property. And, but Locke says, well, surely you, if there's anything that you own, it's your body. And surely you have a right by nature to stay alive. And then by extension... Anything that you do where you exert effort or labor, that becomes your private property. So uh, back to the apple tree. If I walk over to an apple tree, that's everybody's apples until I pick one. And the minute I do, that is my apple. Right? And then he says, you can have as many apples as you want as long as you don't waste them and as long as you don't impinge on somebody else's right to get apples. Mm -hmm. All right, so far so good. Yep. Uh, and uh, then he says, well, uh, okay, in the early days, you, you could only eat so many apples, and, or you could only trade so many apples with somebody else so he was like well if you put a fence around a bunch of apple trees those become your apples that's your property if somebody else wants to put a fence around nebraska that's their property and everybody can have as much property as they want because the world is so big that it, there is no limit to what you can have if uh, you pursue it by virtue of your own effort. Mm -hmm. But then he says money came into the picture. A and this is important because it's a he noticed long before anybody, before the Freuds of the world, that money is funky because it has no intrinsic value. He's like, ooh, look at that shiny piece of metal uh, that uh, actually has, if you're hungry, uh, and you have a choice between a carrot and a lump of gold in the desert, most people are gonna go for the carrot. But his point is is that uh, the allure of money uh, is that it's basically a concentrated symbol of wealth, but because it doesn't spoil, Locke said, you're entitled to have as much money as you're able to garner, mm -hmm. right? Then he says, well, the reality is, is that some people are more, the word that he used was industrious. He said some people are more industrious than others. All right, today we would say smarter, less lazy, more ambitious. 
He just said that's natural. It's also true. Therefore, he argued, uh, uh, over time, some people are going to have a whole lot of property and other people not much at all. Inequality for Locke is natural and beneficial for everyone. His argument was that, you know, the rising tide lifts all boats and that the truly creative and innovative are entitled to relatively unlimited worth because we're all better off uh, as a result. So the point very simply is that, well, that's face. And then you have Adam Smith, uh, you know, uh, in the next century uh, with the invisible hand where Adam Smith says, everyone pursuing their own selfish that's not necessarily pejorative if everyone pursues their own selfish interests we will all be better off as a result and what do you think is the flaw in that way of thinking? well there's two flaws one is is that um well one flaw is first of all that that it, it is based on an erroneous assumption to begin with, which is that there never was a time in human history when we were an asocial species. In a sense, you don't feel like that we're, there's a, this emphasis of uh, individual autonomy is a flawed premise. Like there's, a, there's something fundamentally, deeply uh, interconnected between us. I do. I think that Plato and Socrates uh, you know, in the Crito were closer to the truth uh, when they started with the assumption that we were interdependent and they derived individual autonomy as a manifestation of a functional social system. That's fascinating. So when Margaret Thatcher, you're too young, uh, you know, in the 1980s, she said, societies, there's no such thing as societies. There's just individuals pursuing their self-interest. So uh, so that's one point where I would take issue respectfully with John Locke. Point number two is when Locke says in 1690, well, England's filled up. Um, it, it, and so if you want some land, just go to America. It's empty. Or maybe there's a few savages there. Just kill them. So and, and uh, Melville does the same thing in Moby Dick, where he he thinks about, will there ever come a time where we run out of whales? Mm -hmm. And he says, no, but we have run out of whales. And so Locke was right, maybe in 1690, that the world was large and had infinite resources. He's certainly wrong today, in in my opinion. Also wrong is the claim uh, that the unlimited pursuit of personal wealth does not harm those around us. There, there is no doubt uh, that radical inequality is tragic psychologically and physically. It, it's, poverty is not that terrible. It's easy for me to say because I have a place to stay and something to eat. Uh, but as long as you're not starving and, and have a place to be, Poverty's not as challenging as being having the impoverished in close proximity to those who are obscenely wealthy. So the, it's not the any absolute measure of your well-being; it's the inequality of that well-being. That's it's quite right. It's painful. Um, so maybe just to uh, linger on the Jordan Peterson thing, in, in terms of your uh, disagreement in his worldview. So he went through quite a bit it you know there's been a, quite a bit of fire right in in his defense or maybe his opposition of the idea of equality of outcomes so looking at the inequality that's in our world looking at you know c certain groups yep. measurably having an outcome that's different than other groups and then drawing conclusions about fundamental uh unfairness injustice inequality in the system so like systematic racism yeah. systematic sexism systematic anything else that creates inequality and he's been kind of uh, saying pretty simple things uh, to say that uh, you know the system for the most part is not broken or flawed yeah that oh. the inequality is part the um, the inequality of outcomes is part of our world what we should strive for is the, uh, you know, equality of opportunity. Yeah, and I, I do not dispute that 
as an abstraction. But again, to back up for a second, I, I do take issue with Jordan's uh, fervent devotion to the free market and his cavalier dismissal of Marxist ideas, which he has, uh, in my estimation, uh, mischaracterized in his public depictions. L let's, is, let's get into it. So he, he just seems to really not like um, uh, socialism, Marxism, communism. Yeah. Uh, historically speaking, sort of, uh, I mean, how would I characterize it? I'm not exactly sure. I don't want to. Again, he's yeah, not, he'll eventually be here to defend himself. John Locke, unfortunately, not here to defend exactly. himself. Exactly. <laughs> but what's, what's your sense of... Uh, about Marxism and and uh, the uh, the way Jordan talks about it, the way you think about it, from the economics, from the philosophical perspective. Yeah, well, I, I, if we were all here together, I'd say we need to start with Marx's economic and philosophical manuscripts of 1844 before Marx became more of a polemicist. And I would argue that Marx's political philosophy he's a crappy economist i don't dispute that uh, but his arguments about human nature his arguments about the inevitably catastrophic psychological and environmental and economic effects of capitalism i would argue every one of those has proven quite right marx maybe did not have the answer uh, but he saw in the 18 whenever he was writing um, that inevitably uh, capitalism um, would lead to massive inequity that it was ultimately based on uh, the need to denigrate and dehumanize labor to render them in his language a fleshy cog in a giant machine mm -hmm. and that it would create uh, a tension and conflict between those who own things and those who made things that over time would always, you know, the Thomas Piketty guy who writes about capital and, and just makes the point that return on investment will always be greater than wages. That means the people with money are going to have a lot more. That means there's going to come a point where the economic house of cards falls apart. Now, the Joseph Schumpters of the world, they're like, that's creative destruction. Bring it. That, that's yeah. great. So I think it's Niles Ferguson. He was, he's a historian. He may be at Stanford now. He was at Harvard. You know, he writes about the history of money, and he's like, yeah, there's been 20 or whatever depressions and big recessions uh, in the last several hundred years. And when that happens, half of the population or whatever is catastrophically inconvenienced. But that's the price that we pay for progress. Other people would argue, and I would uh, agree with them, that I will happily sacrifice the rate of progress in order to flatten the curve of economic destruction. To put that in plainer English, um, I would um, uh, direct our attention to the social democracies that forgetting for the moment of whether it's possible to do this on a scale in a country as big as ours, on all of the things that really matter, uh, you know, gross domestic GDP or whatever, that's just an abstraction. But when you look at whatever the United Nations says, how we measure quality of life, uh, you know, life expectancy, education, you know, rates of alcoholism, suicide, and so on, the countries that do better uh, are the mixed economies. They're market economies that have high tax rates in exchange uh, for the provision of services that come as a right for citizens yeah so i mean i guess the question is you've kind of mentioned that uh, you know uh like as marx <coughs> described that uh, capitalism <coughs> with a slippery slope eventually <laughs> things go awry in some kind of way so that's the question is when you have when you implement a system yeah how does it go wrong eventually 
you know the you know eventually we'll all be dead that's exactly right <laughs> so, no no so, so the, look the, that no that's right so uh, and then the criticism i mean i think these days uh, unfortunately marxism as like is a dirty word I, I say unfortunately because even if you disagree with a philosophy yeah. it should you should uh like calling somebody a marxist yeah should not be a thing that uh shuts down all conversation no that's right and and the fact is is i'm sympathetic with uh jordan's dismissal of the folks in popular the talking heads these days who spew marxist words um it, to me it's like fashionable nonsense I don't, do you know that book that the physicist wrote mocking uh you're too young so in the uh 20 or so years ago, we're all pretty young well yeah that's uh, right but they're i think they're with these the nyu year. physicists they wrote a paper just mocking the uh kind of literary uh postmodern types and oh, it was yeah. oh those kinds of, yeah yeah and it was just nonsense and of course it was made the lead article um and and you know my poor is marx wouldn't be a marxist <laughs> <laughs> It, True. It, I've uh, read and listened to some of the work of uh, Richard Wolff. He speaks pretty eloquently about Marxism. I like him. Yes. Uh, he's uh, one of the only, uh, you know, one of the only people speaking about a lot about Marxism in the way we are now, in in a serious way, in a, in a sort of saying, you know, uh, what are the flaws of capitalism? Not saying like. Yeah, basically sounding very different. And people should check out his work. No, I. Because all this kind of work, this kind of outrage, mob culture, of uh, sort of demanding equal equality of outcome, that's not Marxism. It uh, is not Marxism. But yeah. he, he 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 didn't say that. You know, he literally said each. What was it like? Each according to their needs and each according to their abilities, or something like that. So the question is the implementation, like. Absolutely. Well, humans are messy. So how does it go wrong? Like it is me there you go. Lex. It's messy. Brilliant. It's messy. And this gets back to my rant about the book that I want to try if I don't stroke out why left and right <laughs> are both beside the point. Yeah. You know, the the people uh, uh conservatives are right when they condemn liberals for being simple-minded by assuming that uh, a modification of external conditions will yield changes in human nature mm -hmm. you know the, the uh, you know again uh, that's where marx and skinner are odd bedfellows you know here they are just saying oh let's change the surroundings and things will inevitably get better on the other hand when um conservatives say that uh, people are innately selfish and they use that as the justification for glorifying uh, the unbridled pursuit of wealth well they're only half right because it turns out that uh, we can be innately selfish uh, but we are also innately generous and reciprocating creatures there's remarkable studies i think they've been done at yale uh, of you know babies 14 month old babies um the, if uh someone hands them a toy and then wants something in return babies before they can walk and talk will reciprocate all right fine if someone if they want a toy let's say or a bottle of water baby wants a bottle of water and i look like I'm trying to give it to the baby, but I drop the bottle so the baby doesn't get what she or he wanted. When given a chance to reciprocate, little babies will reciprocate because they're aware of and are responding to intention. Similarly, if they see somebody um, behaving unfairly to, to someone, they will not help that person in return. So, so my point is, is yeah, we are selfish creatures at times, but we are also simultaneously uber social creatures who are eager to reciprocate. And in fact, we're congenitally prepared to be reciprocators to the point where uh, we will reciprocate on the basis of intentions above and beyond what actually happens how, how close so i mean your your work is on the fundamental 
role of the fear of mortality in, yeah. our, in ourselves. How fundamental is this reciprocation, this human connection to other humans? Oh, I think it's really innate. innate. Yeah, I, I think it's because, innate. yeah, bats reciprocate, uh, not by intention, but, uh, you know, this, I'm going here from uh, Richard Dawkins, uh, the selfish gene, you know, to... I love the early Dawkins. I'm less enamored uh, with like the, the early Beatles. Yeah, no, no. no. <laughs> and, and again, I say this with great respect, but uh, you know, Dawkins just points out that uh, you know reciprocation is just fundamental. Cooperation is fundamental. You know, it, it is the the. It's a one-sided view of evolutionary takes on things when we see it solely in terms of individual competition uh, and it's it's almost uh, from a game theoretic perspective too it's just easier to see the world that way yes, it's it it's easier to i don't know i i mean you see this in physics uh there's, there's a whole field of folks like complexity yeah. uh that kind of embrace the fact that it's all an intricately connected mess and it's just very difficult to do anything uh, with that kind of science, but it seems to be much closer to actually representing what the world is like. So, like you put it earlier, Lex, it's messy. Yeah, I love reminding people that it's not the role of the media to endorse candidates. Are you looking for analysis of the 2020 election based on actual facts and policies? Well, take a look at this. Our team of editors prepared this special infographic, which gives you a fact-based summary of where the candidates stand on critical issues like taxes, healthcare, infrastructure, immigration, the Second Amendment, China, and so, so many others. This is a must-have overview for all Americans who want to be truly informed. And now you can get your own digital copy today. Just click on that button below this video and you can get unlimited access to all of the Epic Times' digital content, as well as the special digital infographic for just a single dollar. Unlike other media, the Epic Times does not endorse any candidates. That's not the role of a media. Instead, we report the facts without spin and let you make up your own mind. Every single day, we cover the latest election-related news. We publish in-depth analysis. We conduct our own independent national polls, and we give you policy comparisons between the two parties that are based on actual facts. So click on the button below, get your digital infographic, check out our nonpartisan reporting, and stay truly informed. This is the premier pro version of the most popular transitions for today. Just choose the appropriate transition and drag it to the timeline. It's ready. Zoom transitions. Slides. Glitch. Light leaks. Split and many other things. Do you make video blog, wide format film or vertical video for Instagram? No problem. This package is optimized for any aspect ratio. Do you need sound design? Every transition includes sound effect. Lift your videos to the next level. There's lots of times in your life you're not going to be happy and so that's not gonna work. You wanna have something meaningful. That's mm -hmm. the, the boat that will take you through the storm. Well, here we are with Jordan Peterson, and I could not be more excited to talk with the best-selling author of 12 Rules for Life, and I will talk with him. But first, I want to say thanks to our sponsors over at Helix Sleep. So, there's nobody on the planet like you, so why would you buy a mattress built for everyone else? Working with the world's leading sleep experts, Helix Sleep developed a mattress that's customized to your specific height, weight, and sleep preferences, so you can have the best sleep of your life at an unbeatable price. Here's how it works. You go to helixsleep.com, fill out their two-minute sleep quiz, and they'll design your custom mattress. They even customize each side for you and a partner. In 2018, Helix Sleep has taken customized sleep to the next level with their Helix pillow. It really is fantastic. Their all-new pillows are fully adjustable, so you can achieve perfect comfort regardless of sleep position or body type. 
Helix Sleep has thousands of five-star reviews, plus you get 100 nights to try them out. Go to helixsleep.com slash benguest right now, and you'll get up to 125 bucks toward your mattress order. That's helixsleep.com slash benguest for up to $125 off your mattress order. Again, that's helixsleep.com slash benguest. Get the deal with Ben Guest and make sure that they know that we sent you. Okay, so I could not be more excited to speak with Jordan Peterson. Well, as Jordan knows, before the show, we talked for an hour before the show just about interesting things we should have caught on tape. But now we're actually going to get a chance to do it live. So here is 